Oh. <laughs> thank you. Welcome, everybody. So thank you for joining our demo day. We're very pleased to have you all here, both on our campus as well as remotely on our live platforms. For those who don't know, I'm Enya, the Events and Community Specialist here at Le Vigo Montreal. Uh, <laughs> thank you. For people joining us online, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat or comment section. You can tell us who you are, where you're from. We'd love to hear from you and have your engagement as well. Again, welcome everybody and thanks for being here. So this is a very exciting moment because it's the last day of an intensive nine-week learning journey for the students of our web development batch, namely batch 931. Wow. Woo! <laughs> We're really looking forward to presenting their projects today that they have been busy building over the past weeks. Let's start with a huge round of applause to congratulate and encourage them. Before we get started, I'd like to give you a bit more information about what we do at Le Wagon for those who are new. So Le Vagon began in Paris in 2013 and is now present in 39 cities globally. Today, I'm happy to share that we are contributing to over 16,000 alumni. We are also very proud to be one of the most acclaimed coding boot camps according to our students' reviews. Congratulations to all of you today for joining this incredible community. We're very happy to have you with us. <laughs> At Le Vagon, we put a very important emphasis on practical learning and product, and that's just what you're about to discover in a few moments. Additionally, many of our graduates have gone on and continued working on their products even after the boot camp and have launched over 210 startups. We offer two main programs, one in web development and one in data science. Tonight, we celebrate the end of our full-time web development boot camp. To give you an idea of what we offer, we have a nine-week full-time format Mondays to Fridays, and a 24-week part-time format on Tuesday and Thursday evenings and Saturday during the day. This is best for those who wish to continue their day jobs or have other responsibilities during the week, but we like to accommodate as many people as we can. The students today come from diverse backgrounds, academically, professionally, and culturally. Some have just finished university. Some were working in careers completely related or unrelated to tech for a number of years. They all have different goals for after the boot camp, but what they have in common is a strong motivation and dedication to gain new technical hands-on skills in a very short period of time. Some of our graduates will be working as developers, freelancers, and some will be working in tech-related roles such as consulting and product management. Tonight, you will discover the projects they have built in teams over the last weeks of their bootcamp. In the past nine weeks, they have learned how to code, but mostly how to work and think like developers, and they have also learned how to learn. For those of you who have never coded before, you can't imagine the challenge of coding what you're about to see in only a few days, especially since nine weeks ago, most of them had little or no background in programming. As a team, our web development students went through the steps of building a web application from scratch. They had to imagine, design, prototype, define the tech spec, code, and host it online to share with the world, and finally, they had to prepare their pitch. Trust me, you're all going to be very impressed by what they have achieved, but I will let the project speak for themselves. So, to kick it off, we have Minder, which is built by Ege, Casey, Hugo, and Adu. This app allows you to gather all news from your favorite artists, movie directors, and authors in one place. You can come on up to the stage. <laughs> All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Garrett. I recently moved to Montreal from Toronto. In Toronto, I had a fairly wide uh, network of friends, so I would easily find out about new albums, books, concerts, you name it. Uh, in Montreal, I don't have friends, so I find it a bit difficult to stay on top of things. So uh, I tried services like Songkick, Goodreads, but I found the notifications a bit clunky, uh, and I often miss good content. For example, did anyone tell me that Jordan Peele had a new movie out? Nope. So that's when I discovered Minder. So Minder consolidates all of these services into one. So I have my music, my books, and my movies all in one place. So let's jump in and set up my profile. 
Okay, so I'm going to start off by picking some authors that I'm a big fan of. So Malcolm Gladwell is an easy one for me. Uh, Ryan Holiday, my girlfriend, is a huge fan, so I definitely want to follow him. Uh, Michelle Obama, let's see, and Jamie Oliver. I need some uh, good recipe recommendations after this long boot camp of eating fast food. <laughs> so let's uh, follow just a couple other random ones because I haven't been staying on top of books recently just to get some recommendations. That should be good. Let's go next. And okay, so we're going to pick some directors so we can get some good movie records. So Ryan Coogler, oh, James Cameron. I'm not sure if he's making anything new recently, but I'm going to follow just to keep track of him. And let's go Gina Prince Bythewood and David Gordon Green. And we'll also just throw in a couple of randoms just to keep it interesting. And that should probably be good for directors. Oh. Jordan Peele, don't want to make the second or make a mistake twice, so I'm going to follow him as well. And finally, music. So I'm a huge music fan, so there's going to be a lot of artists I'm going to have to add. But I think I can actually import all of my favorites directly from Spotify, so let's go ahead and give it a whirl. So I'm going to go over to Spotify and uh, enter my credentials. I get a bit nervous writing in front of crowds, so bear with me if I enter the wrong password. Let's see, drum roll, and we're in. <laughs> so all 257 artists in Minder, just like that. So everything's set up, profile's good to go. Let's jump over and check out some of those uh, artists that I imported into Minder. Perfect, so everything's here. Actually, probably easier to filter directly on music, so let's go ahead and do that. Perfect, this looks like everything from my Spotify, but actually Megadeth I, I saw there, that's a bit odd. That must have been a dark phase in my life. Let's delete that one. Perfect, bye. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much everything, except I think I'm missing one of my favorite Backstreet Boys. I think I actually unfollowed them in Spotify because I was a bit self-conscious on my public profile, so let's add them directly into Minder. So I'm gonna search for Backstreet Boys, perfect. There they are, profile's complete, we're good to go. So let's jump in and look at some content. Let's start with books. Uh, perfect, already seeing some stuff that I didn't know was out. So The Bomber Mafia by Malcolm Gladwell just came out this summer. I'm gonna add that to my favorite so I don't forget about it. And Jamie Oliver's new cookbook, let's heart that as well. And lots of good stuff, but I gotta look at this one for my girlfriend. Uh, let's look at A Valentine for Christmas. Let's take a look at the description. I'm not sure if I want to save it. Opposites do more than attract when an older... Okay, that's a bit too sappy. I'm going to skip that one. So let's go over to movies. Okay. Okay, wait. I guess Jam James Cameron has been busy. Avatar 2 is coming out. I need to save that into my favorites. And Black Panther sequel. I love sequels. They're often better than the prequel. So I'm going to keep that. Lots of good stuff. I think that's good for movies, though. Last but not least, let's check out music. Okay, perfect. So as you guys know, I'm a huge music fan, so there's a bunch of music here. Uh, I'm going to favorite Taylor Swift and obviously the Backstreet Boys. As you guys know, big fan. And I'm actually seeing concerts by the same artists here. So these are all concerts happening in Montreal. Uh, let's The Killers, huge fan, uh, and Cigarettes After Sex. Let's save those two. But I can't get the Backstreet Boys off my mind. So let's go take a look at that album. It's a Christmas album, even better. And it's coming out in October. And wait, they're actually playing at the Bell Center tomorrow. I need to get tickets now. So let's go over to Ticketmaster and buy those tickets. Let's see if there's any left. Perfect. Front row. Got them. We're good to go. So that's a lot of content after not seeing much for a few weeks. Let's just go over to my favorites. See everything in one view. Perfect. I'm going to have a really busy week getting through all this content. And I really feel like I have peace of mind with Minder. Thank you, Minder. I'm never going to miss a piece of content, music, books, or movies. Thank you. Amazing job, Minder. Awesome stuff. So, next up, we have Meatball, built by Jamie, Julien, Victor, and Mikey. Thanks to this solution, hang on, thanks to this solution, <laughs> you can take part in a bas basketball game based on where it's played and the level of the other players. Come on up. <laughs> Hi. 
Hello everyone, my name is Jamie, and growing up I went to high school with two NBA champions, Tristan Thompson and Andrew Wiggins of the Golden State Warriors, so you know I'm a competitive basketball player. <laughs> In the past, I've tried other apps to find competitive basketball games, but none of them had ranks and games of different skill levels, and that's when I found Meatball. Meatball has casual games when, where I can play games just for fun and competitive games when I want to be serious and rank up. I've used this app plenty of times already, and there's so many courts and, and games to choose from. Just by talking about Meatball, I want to play right now. Let me see if there's any parks nearby. Ah, Parc Sur Madeleine Gagnon. They have a few games there scheduled, some competitive, some casual. But ooh, this one right here is happening very soon, and there's one spot left. I'm going to join. That user is ranked three. I'm ranked five. This should be an easy win. Let's play. Whew. That was a tough game. I won by one point. I'll take it, though. A win is a win. Let me check my stats. I should have ranked up. Ah, still ranked five? I swear I should have been ranked six. Let me check my previous games to see what happened. Ah, it all makes sense now. I lost that game there. I need one more game to rank up. Let's see who wants to play this weekend. Anybody down to play ball on Saturday? Should be nice weather. I'm pretty sure someone's going to reply real quick. Oh, wow. Julian replied so fast, I'm sure he wants to rank up. He wants to play on Saturday, 6 p.m. near Verdun. Cool. Let's do it. I'll create the game. So where is Verdun? Oh, that's not that far. And they have a park nearby, Park Dan Haganu. Never been there. Looks nice. Let's do it. I'll create the game. Okay, Park Dan Haganu. He said Saturday. It's cool. 6 p.m., one versus one, and definitely competitive. I want to rank up. I'm going to message Julian, tell him I created the game, and I'll see you later. That was a very tough game indeed. 55 to 45. Ah, sorry. That was a tough game indeed. 55 to 45. The good thing about Meatball is that you need the majority of the players to confirm the results in order for your rank to get updated. Okay. My opponent, Julian, he was very good and very competitive, and he was also very tall. So I couldn't get any rebounds. I think he deserves a rebound badge. Let's give it to him. Hold on. I just won that game. You know what that means? Rank six, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Woo. I'm so excited about ranking up. I want to do it again next week. Let's see what games are available next week. Actually, I'm going to be teaching at Ecole de Petit Chapiteau. Let's see if they have any courts there. Oh, amazing. They have a 4v4 game going on with two spots left. I'm going to join. Not only am I there to teach web development, I can teach these guys a lesson in basketball too. <laughs> but wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Is that LeBron James? <laughs> There's no way I want to play against LeBron James. I just ranked up, and I'm not trying to lose my rank again. I'm going to switch sides. Let's play with LeBron. <laughs> Thanks to Meatball, I can play competitive opponents, play casual games, and keep track of my rank and my stats. Thanks to my team, Meatball, we made Meatball possible. And like LeBron James kind of once said, I'm taking my talents to Meatball. <laughs> Thank you. If you're a basketball fan, you know what app to use. Next, I'd like to introduce Sarah, Mito, Michael, and Winnie. Together, they built FeeCell, a web app that curates gestures of affection and date suggestions for your partner based on their interests. You can come on up to the stage.
Hi, I'm Winnie. <laughs> I have a wonderful partner named Elvis, who's here with us today. <laughs> We've been together for two years now, and it's been going pretty well, but we have been going through a little bit of a rough patch recently. He feels that I don't plan or initiate things enough, and to be honest, that's kind of true, I understand. It's because when I do try to plan things, I get a little overwhelmed. I don't know if he's going to like what I've planned, and sometimes I honestly just forget my bad. And when I was telling my friend about these issues that we've been having, she recommended an app called Ficel which uses a complex algorithm to psychoanalyze your partner to plan and deliver customized events on your behalf. So in other words, I get to show my love without lifting a finger. I've already created my account, but I haven't made his profile yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. He has a hotmail, which means that he doesn't live in the 21st century yet, but that's okay, we'll forgive him. I'm going to put Montreal since we're here visiting for the summer. Okay, and Elvis enjoys movies, food, the outdoors, and I think I'll just stick with those three for now. Cool, a Tinder swipe. We do like to Netflix and chill. I'm going to like that. He's learning how to fish. I'm very proud of him. I'm going to like that as well. He's quite the romantic. He'll appreciate a good love poem, yes. And I actually do text him good morning every morning. Yes to that. <laughs> He's a little bit bougie. I think we're going to get him a Louis Vuitton bag. Yes, yes. All right, let's see what Fisel has in store. I bet it's using its complex algorithm right now as we speak. <laughs> and here we go. Fisel's generated three well-curated events for us next week. I wonder what time Netflix and chill is? 3 p.m. Okay, that's a little bit too early to chill. I, I'm going to change that to 7 and confirm. There we go. And it sends a confirmation email as well. How convenient. And what about this? $100 for a fishing rod? Okay, okay, I think he can just borrow one of my dad's old ones. Sorry, babe. I'm going to delete this. Okay, what about this love poem? I wonder, every time I see your face, it reminds me of you. The most romantic thing I've ever heard. I think I want him to hear right now. I'm going to send it. I think he'll really appreciate the artistry of it. I just can't wait for him to read it. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot your birthday is next Friday. Oops, and I haven't gotten a gift for you yet. I'm going to create a new event, see what the suggestions are. Mm, let's see. AirPods. He just lost his AirPods last week. That would be the perfect gift. I'm going to schedule it to send on Friday on his real birthday. And there we go. It's scheduled. I didn't have to do anything, and it's going to arrive next Friday. Let's see what else this app has in store for us. Past events. Oh. There's a love poem that I just sent him that was such a smashing success. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And I'm going to go into relationship now. And oh, it's us, babe. But oh, I forgot to put a profile picture for you. My bad. Don't worry. I have the perfect picture that exemplifies you as a person. There we go. There's us. And I can even track how many events I've done so far. Only one, but don't worry. We're going to rack up the stats. I think I just got an email from him. Have I? There it is. <laughs> He's just responded to the email that Fisel sent for me about the Netflix and chill. I'm so excited too, babe. Fisel is such a great app. It's going to help us really stay together for such a long time. <laughs> Thanks, Fisel. <laughs> <laughs> Very romantic. I'm a fan. So finally, we have OK Diver, which is built by Nick, Anais, Camilla, and Marving. With this app, you can find the best diving spots in the world and keep track of your diving logs all in one place. So come on up. Hi everyone, my name is Anais, and my second favorite thing to do after coding is scuba diving. But every time I use TripAdvisor or Yelp to find diving spots, I end up in these random places with nothing interesting to see. And another thing that kind of frustrates me is as divers, we have to log our dives to keep track of our stats, keep track of our progress, and we use these paper log books. And I don't know much about nothing, but paper, water sports, not really a good mix. 
Anyways, my friend Marielle and I have decided we want to start traveling again, and we want to plan a whole trip around scuba diving. So we've been using OK Diver to find the best dive sites. So far, it's been really, really good because it's a website that's built by divers for other divers. So Marielle is from the Philippines, and she suggested we go there for our trip. So I want to check out if OK Diver has a couple of sites there. Wow, lots of different options. The Philippines is definitely the place to go. So it's been a little while, so I want a dive that's not too difficult. And I've heard a lot of good things about um, bull diving. And my inner nerd loves kelp, so I want to make sure I find a dive with lots of kelp. OK, this reef looks really interesting. I wonder if it's far away from Marielle's place. OK, not too far at all. And it looks like it has everything that I'm looking for. All these other divers seem to have really enjoyed it too. But before I get too excited, I think I'm going to message one of them, maybe this Marvin guy, and ask him if the dive site is accessible by bus. Because it's happened to me a couple too many times where I think something is close by, and then it turns out it's like a three-hour bus ride, and I just kind of waste all my time. So while I wait for him to respond, I'm going to continue browsing and adding a couple of new sites to my wish list. OK, so this shipwreck looks super cool. Love shipwrecks. I'm going to add that. This is the reef I was just looking at. Definitely don't want to forget it. And then maybe one more. Ooh, yes, I've heard really, really good things about this island. Definitely going to add that, too. So now, next time I hang out with Marielle, we can go over our wish lists and decide exactly where we want to go. So the last time I went diving, I was a little forgetful, and I forgot, I forgot to log my dive. Shame on me. But now that I use OK Diver, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> so, although, although OK Diver has a bunch of sites already created by other users, I'm pretty sure no one has been to Lake Baikal in the middle of Russia to scuba dive yet. Yeah, just as I thought. So basically, the story is I was backpacking through Siberia, and I met this old lady who told me that if you swim in Lake Baikal, it adds seven years of good luck to your life. Not only that, but it's the world's deepest freshwater lake at 1,642 meters deep. Not only is it it's so deep that no human has ever gone to the bottom of it. And whenever they send any like machines or robots to explore, they always come back up with like these scratches and bumps. So we don't really know what goes on down there. So I heard all of this and I was like, yep, this is exactly where I want to go for my next dive. So I convinced Marielle to go. She's pretty down for everything at this point. And uh, we went last week. It was a really, really fun dive. We went really, honestly, it was the deepest dive I'd ever been. We didn't go to the bottom. And it wasn't too long. It was a very chill dive. And apart from the fact that it was absolutely freezing, <laughs> we had a really, really good time. The thing that surprised me the most, actually, were how many um, wild seals there were. I don't think they've seen a lot of humans, so they would like come up to you, and like they were really curious and playful. And it was honestly something I've never experienced before. I definitely want other divers to experience this and get curious too. So I want them to know about the seals because very, very unique. The only thing I would say though is go with a Russian speaker or learn a little bit of Russian because nobody speaks English in Siberia and it was a little awkward at times. So now that I've created the dive site, other divers can find it and hopefully they'll get curious and want to try it too. So our trip is coming up. Mariel and I are both really, really excited. And I've been going over my profile and checking my past logs, getting pumped, going down memory lane, remembering how much I love diving. And I'm super, super excited to add more sites to my map. I can't wait to start traveling again and just really scuba dive because it's been way too long. <laughs> the last thing that's on my list is I want to see if that Marvin guy responded to my message because we're just missing a couple of details before we book everything. OK, he said it's not too far and that he really recommends it. That's all the convincing I need. We're going to add it to our list. I can't wait to start scuba diving again. Thanks, OK Diver. <laughs> Amazing job, OK Diver. So these were some awesome presentations. Students, your hard work definitely shows. So congratulations. So now I would love to invite our incredible lead teacher and batch manager, Stefan, to the stage to give out the diplomas. Thank you so much. And 
And so students, you will also uh, be taking a photo with the photographer when you come up. And with me. Uh, well, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Look how cute they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so first up, we are going to have Jamie. Oh. Congratulations, Jamie. Great work. Awesome. Next up, we're going to have Adu. <laughs> Great job. Next up, we're going to have Camilla. <laughs> Congratulations, Camilla. You're a superstar. <laughs> Next up, Sarah. Congratulations, Sarah. Good job. Next up, Mikey. Come on up. Congratulations. Aww. Great job. Next, we have Ege. Congratulations, Ege, well deserved. <laughs> Next up, Julien. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Beautiful. Next up, Hugo. Well-deserved. <laughs> Next, we're going to have Marvin. <laughs> Congratulations. Next up, we're going to have Mito. <laughs> Congratulations, Mito. You did great. <laughs> Next up, we're going to have Victor. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> All right. Next up, we're going to have Anais. Great job, Anais. Next up, we're going to have... Drum roll. <laughs> Nick! Congratulations, surfer dude. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Next up, we're going to have Casey. Great job, Casey. Awesome. Next up, we're going to have Michael. Congratulations, Michael. All right. And last but not least, Winnie. Congratulations. 
Congratulations. Congratulations to all the teams. You did an amazing job. Of course, all of this would not have been possible without our amazing team at Le Vaigon. Thank you to the staff who are working hard in the background to put things together and provide support. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, teachers and TAs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, teachers and TAs, for sharing your passion and for your positive attitudes, even in the most stressful situations. You played a huge role in their success. And of course, our volunteers this evening. It's an absolute pleasure to work with all of you every day. We still have a few seats available for our next batches in data science and web development in October. If you're interested in joining one of our upcoming boot camps, you can simply check out our Montreal website or come chat with us tonight if you're on campus. Keep in mind that the deadline to apply for the October batches is fast approaching, so don't wait to register. We also have some upcoming events that you might be interested in joining, such as landing your first Rails job on September 6th with Joe. Uh, we have a French info session on September 13th uh, for our brand new French boot camp in October. So come and ask all of your questions if this is of interest to you. Uh, then we have, you can learn how to query databases using SQL on September 14th. Should be fun, it's virtual online. Uh, we have an English info session on September 20th, again, where you can ask all of your questions if you're interested in joining one of our boot camps. And then after the, this is the, <laughs> it's NIE. <laughs> uh, so you can join our info session if you're curious. And finally, you can join a super cool workshop in French on September 21st, where you'll be able to build a web page from scratch. You will be on campus, and you will have the full support of our team with you. And we're going to uh, network and get to know each other. And you can ask questions also about the boot camp as you learn some technical skills. Of course, you can join our meetup and follow our social pages at Le Vagon Canada for updates about future events. We'd love to have you as well, a part of our community. So a massive congratulations to everyone. You nailed it. You should all be very proud. It's truly amazing to see the outcome of your hard work and dedication. You definitely deserve a celebratory drink. Then we'll see you all back on Tuesday to start looking towards the future and help you with your next steps after the weekend. So thank you everyone for watching and joining us virtually as well this evening. It was great to have you. So for those who are live uh, online, you can have a great evening from Le Vagon, Montreal.